uh, Tanner Stewart, Channel 3, back for another edition of the week that was with Tanner Stewart. And, uh, Tanner, we appreciate the time. Got some uh, rave reviews last week. The listeners say uh, we need more Tanner in our lives on Friday afternoons, so we are happy to oblige. And, uh, Tanner, the big story this week, uh, a couple of them really, but we'll start with um, heavy focus out on the beaches, beach safety. And, you know, I've been here now since 2014, and I think really, uh, you know, we always talk about beach safety, and and it's certainly a theme every tourist season and even uh, beyond that, but I have really felt that there's been a lot more angst and consternation coming from beach safety leaders than I can recall in years past. Have you felt that way as well? I have, and I think obviously that goes to the excessive amount of drownings that we've seen, Joe. First, you have to go back a few months to the four drownings in Perdido Key, which caused a stir with the county commission and uh, an attempt to try to get lifeguards out there potentially at the least uh, additional flags and things of that nature. So you had that, and it seems for a bit, Joe, that things calmed down. Back to last week, though, and we had, I believe, seven drownings across the Gulf from Alabama to Panama City in less than five days. And that's concerning for anyone. And I think the problem is you have a lot of people, millions and millions of people are coming out here each year to our beaches. So for us to try to get this message out to the locals, it's almost like we're beating a dead horse here. You have people coming into town that may not be as tuned into the news as they would back home. You know, you're here for vacation. But the biggest point that, that really I'm just reiterating from our beach public safety directors across the panhandle be knowledgeable of the flag system, and it, it, it just, you have to be. I, I have family in Orange Beach over the last week that is in town from Tennessee, and I, I would have been coaching them up all week on just watching, knowing what you're doing, and if you question that water, don't get in it. There are plenty of other things to do. Maybe that's not what people want to hear. There are great days to get out in that water, but there are other days you just shouldn't. And you go to Navarre, where WEAR covered a story earlier this week, a new problem. You have people stealing beach flags, which is a no-no. And that's just in Navarre. So we don't know how how rampant that problem is. But it's certainly something people need to look out for. And Tanner Stewart uh, joining us, a reporter for Channel 3. And, you know, the other thing, too, is – Every day this week, uh, up until today, we have had the excessive heat warnings from the National Weather Service, and we talked a lot about this yesterday, is that, you know, we we who live here and we go to the beach often, we, we know and understand the constant fight it is when you're out in the Gulf where you are just battling waves and you're just exerting a lot of energy. And I've said in the past that, you know, I can get really easily sunburned out of the beach because you you don't feel the sun like you would elsewhere. And I think for a lot of people, you don't really realize just how much energy is being exerted by being out there in the water, compounding that with the fact that we've got heat indexes of 115 degrees. And so you just have a kind of a perfect storm. Also, uh, Tanner, I uh, want to get your thoughts on the irony not lost on me. We, you know, we had the tragedy over in Destin earlier this week. Ryan Mallett, uh, former NFL quarterback and former Arkansas star, uh, he played in the mid-2000s at Arkansas, and so did Peyton Hillis. And to have both of those uh, men, uh, one unfortunately passing away, another nearly passing away, uh, at, at Pensacola Beach in January. Uh, I mean, that's uh, troubling in its own right. We're talking about two former NFL players. Exactly. And I think uh, it's so unfortunate and it's so bittersweet to say this, Joe, but you look at these two athletes here and they should serve as a testament to just how dangerous those conditions are. And you mentioned the temperatures out there, the heat index. You talked with Joe Greenwood out of Pensacola Beach, the public safety director out there, and the first thing he would usually mention isn't rip current. Although he's a huge proponent of, of being knowledgeable of that, he goes straight after that heat and staying hydrated. If you're not physically prepared, if you get caught in a rip current, you, you have no chance. So 
Obviously, you have to know what you're doing when you're out there, but you have to be prepared. He told me last week a, a, an absolutely beautiful day and a, a beautiful time on the beach can quickly turn into a disaster for families. And it's just it's one of those things that I, I, I guess the counties have to continue to hone in on people. You have visitors coming in week after week after week. It, it's new people. It's just unfortunate that, that more people aren't trying to be knowledgeable of this stuff. But, yeah, stay safe. Everybody wants to have a good time at the beach. Everybody wants to, you know, get away from their daily doings of work. But remember what you have to do. Stay hydrated. Uh, stay aware. And, and you know, if, if – if you can, go to a beach where lifeguards are near. It's not necessary, but if you're going to be away from the lifeguards, most definitely be aware of your surroundings because that's where you'll start to get away from the flags and things like that too. And it's just it's unfortunate to see these with these, these football players, with Peyton Hillis, with Ryan Mallett, all the other families. I mean, out in Perdido Key, you know, you had a young basketball coach and his nephew. You had two young boys. You had many more over the last week. It's unfortunate, and it's – it's it's just terrible. Another thing that we saw uh, this week, uh, a Civil War era sword, possibly <laughs> real, possibly fake. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? I tell you, Joe, I, I'm on the side of real, okay? And I have absolutely no proof to back this up, okay? So I, I'm, I'm a spectator on this story, but I am really rooting for this sword to be a relic. And my advice is to go stand in line at Antiques Roadshow and get that thing looked at. And if you find out it's a, worth a 50 cents, great. If not, I think a lot of people want to know what's happening here. So I made a post on Facebook a few days ago with the sword, and it came from a, a woman, Patty Sacco, was the original uh, publisher of this sword. She says her husband found it about 30 yards out in Pensacola Beach. Well, all the comments starting to pour in now are – kind of a mix. Some people are saying, well, it's a sword from the Billy Bowlegs parade, from Mardi Gras, or from yeah. someone threw a, threw a Mardi Gras sword out in the ocean having fun. Or I've heard it could be possibly a military academy sword from a wedding ceremony or something of sorts. I, I don't know. And I've seen very little uh, of any substance to anyone backing up their claims, but I don't know. It, it, it's been hard to, to contact the owner of this sword and I would imagine she's been flooded with uh, with messages and maybe have have gone off the uh, the Facebook grid, if you will, for a little while to get things sorted out. But I don't know. It's it's bizarre, and I I get people saying maybe it's from the Billy Bowlegs parade, but this is the first time I've ever heard of a sword like that getting caught. It looks really old, but I've heard that salt water can age things quickly. So we'll yeah. see. I'm uh, I'm keeping an eye out because I definitely I want to get my eyes on that sword if I can. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to transition from the week that was to the week that will be, and we've got uh, Blue Angel Week. And uh, we are now a week away from the one-year anniversary of your flight with Blue Angel number 7. And I would imagine that when you look back on that experience, obviously there's a lot of highs, but you did not, if I recall, get the traditional Blue Angel experience in the number 7. I think that's the best way to put it. I, I was with uh, Blue Angel number seven, Lieutenant Garrett Stangle. He's still with the Blues. And, you know, the, the whole time leading up, I think we knew for about three weeks ahead of time that I was going to go up. And so the whole time, you know, you, you have a lot of reporters throughout the year go up with the Blues. So you're, you're constantly trying to think, how can I make this story different? I'm going to go up. I'm going to do the maneuvers. We've all seen that. And, uh, you know, fortunately for my case, I didn't have to do a whole lot of thinking the way my flight went uh, to, to make it different. Our landing gear stuck quickly after we took off. And, uh, it, I mean, I think we were up for about 60 seconds, and I got to pick up speed for just about that much time. We started hearing some beeping. Lieutenant Stangle quickly took over, and I have to say it's about the safest I've ever felt on any flight. And I am not a huge fan of being up in the air. But he, uh, he handled things great, and, you know, it was about the best scenic, scenic uh, little cruise I've ever taken across the Gulf in my life. But to say that I, uh, I rode with the Blues, that's true. Did I do what the Blues do? Not necessarily, but it was, uh, it was an amazing time. And, you know, when I think back, I, I got to take my family out there, and I got to introduce my, my young daughter to the Blues and my wife and everyone, and, and the entire experience really overtook what's 
you know, I think some look at it as maybe a, a, a gloomy flight. The entire experience was incredible, and I, I can't thank the, the U.S. Navy enough for, for what they did. But, uh, yeah, disappointment, I'm not sure. Maybe uh, initially, but looking back, I, I'm just grateful I got a chance to, to get in that, that F-18 in the first place. All right, that's that's the, the nice version, uh, putting you on the spot here. Yes or no, you demand a rain check with the Blue Angels to do it right. <laughs> I'll put it to you this way, Joe. I know a lot of people that are demanding a rain check for me, so I'll let them do the talking and see what happens. All right. Very good. Tanner Stewart, uh, Channel 3 uh, reporter, thanks so much again, sir. You have a happy Fourth of July weekend, and we'll talk to you next Friday. Sounds good, Joe. We'll see you then.